talking about. Okay, we're on air, just so you know, but carry on. Unless you want me to stop it. Now, when we get to talking about release notes, um, could you just bring up anything that we discussed last meeting? Or sorry, blog posts for the 112 release. What? Never mind. Let's just go. Okay. <laughs> Let's do this no thing. Blog, there's no blog post on the agenda. Everyone just ignore this beginning part. Okay. Okay. Hey. All right. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Today is January 10th. This is a meeting to check in on active development tasks for Backdrop CMS. Um, before we get into all of the exciting stuff that's going on for the next bug fix and minor release, I want to talk about a couple of things that we're doing for the websites. Um, BackdropCMS.org, we have two things we really want to try and get done uh, about the same time as 112 comes out, so we'll see if that happens or not. The modules, themes, and layouts pages are getting reworked, um, number one, to make them look nicer, but more importantly, to make them more usable. So as people are trying to evaluate Backdrop to figure out if it's good enough for them to use, uh, you know, to upgrade from an existing site or to start fresh on, we want to make that process more straightforward. Um, that I have a pull request on my computer. It needs to get pushed up and tested. So we'll see how that goes. Um, the next one, oh, we did talk about it in a lot more detail. I don't think it was the last design meeting. I think it was two design meetings ago. So if you want to hear more about that, you can watch that video. And in the community outreach meeting we just had in the last hour, we also talked about replacing the button on our homepage that lets people try backdrop instead of sending them to Pantheon, which is something that they need to have in a Pantheon account in order to use. We're going to work on setting them up with um, an uh, individual on-demand site generated via Tugboat, which Nate has been doing a lot of work on. So that'll be one step better than what we have now. And then we also discussed long-term what we want to do with that. So if you're interested in how that's going, go ahead and watch the uh, video from the last hour. So that's all we're working on on backdropcms.org. And then, um, Olaf, I noticed you're here. I'm going to try and summarize what's going on with Localize. But if you want to give an update, you're definitely welcome to do that, too. Um, we have started another Gitter channel where the folks who are working on the Localize site are going to be collaborating in trying to figure out how to um, better streamline the process of doing development on the Localize site. Um, but we're trying to make it so that anyone who wants to contribute um, translations can do so more easily. So get translations and contribute translations that they may be using for Backdrop. And that's probably going to involve adding some additional development to the site in how it handles all of the new things that we're supporting in Backdrop. So um, hopefully you'll see a lot more um, development and uh, configuration of that site coming soon. All right, doesn't look like Olaf wants to add anything. So Nate, let's turn it over to you to talk about what's going on in Backdrop itself. Yeah, all right, well, it's January 10th, and that means that we're only five days away from the next Backdrop uh, minor release, which is 1.12. Uh, before we go into 1.12, uh, we'll take a look at 1.11.4, which is the next bug fix release for the current minor version. Uh, and of these, there's a couple of issues I'd like to call out, including uh, probably the most important item that we have to fix, period, is this problem with uh, core updates failing due to uh, parsing of the tests.info files. And so there's this, uh, we use .info files for our tests to uh, show, to, to list all of the test cases that are contained within individual files. And we have a problem that uh, the uh, installer in Backdrop that in downloads and installs modules uh, onto your site sometimes, only sometimes though, parses your tests.info file instead of the module.info file when it installs a, a, a particular project. Uh, and that makes it so that um, this awesome new functionality that we have in 1.12, where uh, users will now be able to update core, um, the core updates fail because of this particular problem. It's, it's not critical because 
if the core update fails, it just can't rename the directories or, or when it, it tries to expand it and it validates it, it, it throws an error. So nothing really bad happens, it just doesn't work sometimes. Uh, it's a, there's a lot of uh, uh, kind of conditions onto which, you know, it's been mixed mixed results between different users. But in any case, we know what the problem is, and that's that we're parsing these info files that we shouldn't be parsing. And so um, that would be great if we can get that fixed so that uh, when 1.12 1.12 comes out and people start using the UI options to have backdrop self-update, that it works all the time. So that issue is number 300, or sorry, 3447. Uh, and I'd say that's that's probably the biggest thing that we have to fix before uh, 1.12 comes out. And we can fix that in 1.11.4 because it's an, an existing problem. And 1.11 actually can self-update as well. It's just not shown in the user interface. So anyway, that's our big item, I think. Uh, other things that uh, are worth calling out for 111.4 include um, adding predefined color schemes to bases. That's 3209. That's been a long <laughs> issue for all of the 1.11 release that we'd like to have color schemes just ship with bases. There's no updates on that issue, although um, we've kind of decided that that one's been stuck in, uh, in a loop for so long that we'll just put in basically what we have as soon as uh, it gets any kind of review whatsoever and just say, it's good enough for now and we can change it later if needed. Uh, also, uh, if you check out the 111.4 for uh, milestone on GitHub, there are currently seven RTL issues, right to left uh, language issues that have been filed by uh, a new user, uh, Uh Thank you for creating all of those issues um, regarding uh, backdrop not displaying correctly in right to left languages. It's been very helpful in all of those issues. It would be lovely if we get them reviewed uh, and merged into backdrop as soon as possible. Uh, the 111.4 uh, milestone actually has about 60 open issues right now. Uh, and if anybody is looking uh, for areas in which they can participate uh, uh, like getting 1.12 prepped for release, the 111.4 milestone is the best stone. Our minor UX improvements uh, and, uh, well, actually that's it, just minor UX improvements. All of the bug fixes though are still in the 111.4 milestone because they can be fixed. It would be preferable if we fix them in both versions rather than just 1.12. Uh, so that's it uh, for 111.4 at least. Uh, 1.12, the release that's coming out in five days, um, some minor updates here on uh, progress. Uh, we have a very minor, uh, I'm not sure quite if it's an API change, a slight behavior change in that uh, the classes that you specify in views now, like CSS classes, now allow underscores. And that's issue 3428. That issue was merged this past week. Um, that matches um, a bug fix that we put into the previous um, bug fix release that uh, underscores were not being allowed inside of layouts. Uh, and when we fixed it inside of layouts, we said, we should also fix this in other places, like views. And so uh, that is a behavior change. It's pretty unlikely that somebody would have uh, put in underscores into their um, views custom class names and then uh, accepted the underscores getting converted to hyphens. Uh, so I think that the risk there is really low. Uh, it's mostly kind of an expansion to make it so that underscores are now supported, whereas previously they were not. Uh, let's see, there is an issue that is open that uh, adds additional configuration options to the search block. That is issue 2923. Uh, I'm not sure about this one. It's kind of, it's, it's new functionality. So I'm not totally sure if it's something that we should be pushing in right now, although it has seen 
several rounds of reviews. Uh, it's pretty well tested. I don't know. I, I think if we're feeling really, really confident about that, then you know, let's let's go ahead and roll with it. It's it's a pretty minor piece of functionality, all all told. So and self-contained. I think it's it's minor, it's self-contained, and it provides a lot of utility. Like that's something that people want to change a lot is the behavior of the search box. So um, I think it was also super close on the last release, and it got bumped from a feature to a task at the end because we thought we would have time to get it in. But then we just had a little extra feedback at the end that made it not ready in time. So I think it's probably fine to get in this time again as a task and not a feature. Um, but if you want more reviewers on it, I think that's also something we can arrange. Um, it's a pretty straightforward, um, you know, log into Sandbox, make sure it works, run tests, make sure they pass sort of uh, issue. So. Yep. OK, well, if it, if it moves into RTBC in the next couple of days, then you know we'll take a look and see. You know, or, or I'll take a look and see if if it seems like it's, you know, its risk is minimal. Uh, okay, let's see. That one's currently needs review. Um, so, it, yeah, like Jen said, it's really close to being completed. Um, also, kind of this next issue is also a needs review. Um, adding icons to the admin bar, issue 1841. Uh, this fits in under our qualifications for UX improvements um, and also pretty unlikely to break anything, just adding images to the uh, to the admin bar. Uh, it looks really nice. It look, it's a really, oh, actually, it's not a new issue at all. It's been open since 2016. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it kind of came from nowhere that, uh, by nowhere, I actually mean Jen. <laughs> the pull request came about, uh, and uh, and it looks really great. So that one, um, yeah, is likely to, to be completed. I think there's a lot of review going on there. Um, I think I think it's a major improvement. So yeah, that looks it's like like we got that completed. It's a good visual change, and it was an attempt to make Gregory happy on <laughs> some other issue. I was like, fine, I'll give you some icons there. Are you happy? And he was like, yes, I'm really happy. And I was like, good. <laughs> yeah, too late to change some things, but not too late to change other things that potentially might have a larger impact, like changing the administrative experience for everybody. So uh, let's see, there's a couple of more issues um, in the 1.12 milestone, none of them particularly critical. Um, all just kind of nice to have things. So uh, you can check out the 1.12 milestone. All told, though, there's only seven issues in there, uh, including two of the ones that we mentioned just now. So uh, yeah, and as kind of expected, um, because we only have five days before the release, like the amount of stuff that we're doing to 1.12 is fairly minimal, right? That's the way we like it. <laughs> What's that? That's how it should be. That's how it should be. For once. Yeah. But, oh, no, it's it's usually like this after the code freeze or after that's the true. feature freeze. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's it for the product update. Uh, it should be, all told, a fairly quiet uh, next couple of days. On Tuesday, the day that we do the release, uh, we'll, of course, make the uh, issue uh, for creating all of the releases. Uh, Schedule-wise, do we want to go ahead and set a time for doing the releases? Or should we just work that up offline? Fine with whatever. So it's uh, Tuesday, right? One thing to keep in mind is that we do have backdrop birthday parties on Tuesday. Right. <laughs> Right. Okay. So, so maybe so we, we need do to do that earlier before. rather than after the party. <laughs> might be dangerous. Yeah, we could push the publish button at the birthday party. That oh, that's that would be fun. Yeah. But let's do everything else before that. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I'm not sure that's even a good idea because that's 5 p.m. Like even when we would start, and we probably wouldn't even do it until like 6 or 7 p.m. And we're Pacific, so. At least everybody to the east of us, that's even later. So, I mean, we don't want to be making releases at like 10 or 11 p.m., you know? That's too late. Midnight. 
Not, not really. I mean, we've had a couple of times where that has happened, but not recently. No, I mean, back up early 1.0, 2.0. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Two. Well, I'd say let, let's do the release sometime in the afternoon um, just to have it, you know, fully complete. We won't, you know, we'll feel fully satisfied and then we'll go off the birthday party. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So we'll figure out the time sometime in the afternoon, early afternoon uh, Pacific. Uh, we'll be making uh, the 1.12 release. And um, it's going to be pouring in California all weekend, which means that Nate and I will be trapped indoors and likely working on issues. So um, my uh -huh. plan is to uh, work on the bug fix milestone and see if there are any kind of you know reported bugs from other people that have quick, easy fixes um, and try and, because I know every time we bump like 100 bugs to the next bug fix milestone, I'm like, we should really Spend some time on those. So that's yeah, my plan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, great. So, uh, yeah, Jen, do you want to cover some changes to um, moving stuff into milestones? Sure. So this is alpha for handling issues into milestones. We are going to give it a shot and see how it goes. We'll adjust as needed. So definitely give us your feedback on what you think. Um, but we did have a bunch of issues in the last few releases where s some people, myself included, would have an issue and be like, I really want this one to get in, and we would just tag it. <laughs> and uh, other people who are trying to you know, responsibly manage the milestones are like, where are all of these issues coming from that people are just throwing in here? And so we decided that we'd better if we had a process for getting something onto a milestone. And so that's both for a bug fix milestone, but more importantly for a minor uh, version milestone. And so we now have a tag. This is recommended by Doc Walmont. In the issue queue, it's currently called Milestone Candidate. I think it's a status milestone candidate. I don't know. Um, I'm open to changing the terminology if anyone wants to call it um, Doc Walmont rest of milestone suggestion or whatever else. Um, but because we were using contrib candidate, I thought milestone candidate would be nice to match. But anyway. What happens is if you have an issue that you think is either really important or would make a really big difference to backdrop, you can tag it with milestone candidate. And when all of the issues get bumped from one milestone and move to the next, someone will review that milestone candidate list and either say, oh yes, secondary opinion says this should put it into the candidate. So we need two people to agree that an issue needs to be a milestone candidate before it goes in. Um, however, it's going to be uh, a little bit for bug fixes. It's going to be a little bit more critical. Like the only stuff that can get onto that bug fix milestone is going to be either it's really important, something like um, you know setting sub PHP has an error in it, or we can't we can't do the automatic update because of whatever, or it needs to already have a pull request on it because there could be any number of bugs that could possibly get into that next milestone. But if they don't have a pull request, then being in that queue is just sort of taking up. Um, uh, brain space for the people who need to work on it. So if it doesn't, if it ends up in that queue and it's not important and it doesn't have a pull request, it's going to get bumped. So just so you know that. Um, and then for the minor milestones, that is the kind of thing where if two people agree that needs to be on the list, that'll probably end up in a weekly meeting agenda. And if everyone at the weekly meeting agrees that's not important, it might get bumped off. Um, so I think we'll we'll play it by ear for a while and see how it goes with managing this milestone. And eventually we may have um, that process go to like PMC review uh, and say like, hey, PMC, this is what the future of Backdrop look like. Do you agree? Yes, no. And have kind of a discussion about that. Um, but we've been pretty good so far about getting those um, issues right just by talking about them. So I think having it in a public meeting where people can discuss it is probably better than in a private queue or a PMC calls to shots, at least for now. Um, but if we ever get to something where we need to escalate to a private conversation, that's definitely an option. <laughs> um, but I figure this will work uh, for now. We'll see how it goes. And um, hopefully it'll work for 1.3 and we can adjust it as needed, if not. Does that sound good to everyone? It's a plan. <laughs> can you just clarify it for me? So, is One more time with less yeah. words. <laughs> Let me try again. How, okay. how, in the past, I've not touch milestones so right. other people deal with it. It, 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 it. it seems like theoretically I could have added something to a milestone, yeah. but I chose not to. Everybody should, I, should does have it take, permission to add milestones. There's no like actual, mm -hmm. you know, um, 
preventative measures in place. Right. Uh, the process would be now, instead of adding a milestone, which though you have technically a permission to do, you should add the label that says milestone candidates. So you have an avid issue and you're like, wow, this seems like a really good feature. Add a milestone, you can add the label. Um, and then, or if you have a bug where you're like, oh, this seems really serious, you can add that label as well. And then that way, when all the bugs or issues that are currently in any milestone get bumped to the next milestone, we'll also review that milestone candidate tag and say, okay, yes or no. If it's no, we'll remove the tag. If it's yes, we'll put it into the right milestone and make sure that they get slotted. And if it is a feature that we think is a big enough deal that needs to get into the next minor release, it'll probably also appear on this list that we talk about in the weekly meeting to make sure that everybody in the meeting agrees that that's a big enough feature that it needs to get in for. Right. Um, but so we've we done that recently with things like dashboard, right? Where somebody started working on it and everyone's like, oh, that should totally go in. But just making sure that we get more visibility on the fact that dashboard is now on this list for 113. Um, uh, going forward, we wanna make sure everyone's okay with that. Would it be fair to say that anybody can mark something a milestone candidate, but there's yes. a select group of people that are actually promoting it to a milestone? It's not even about the people, it's about having a secondary opinion. Okay. So it doesn't matter who it is, um, but if you create an issue and then Gregory's like, yes, we need this, that's two people that have agreed that that issue needs to be in there and not just one person who okay. agrees the miles. But so if Gregory marked something as a milestone candidate, I could mark it as a milestone? Yes. So, okay. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying that. I, I hadn't made that clear the first time, so very helpful. Have we uh, found a place to document that process? Uh, that would be good. <laughs> There's a proposal out there that in the new contributor guide, but the new contributor guide doesn't exist yet. So. But yeah, maybe I'll just create like a basic page for now and yeah. throw it up there. Yeah, it might, you know, it might also be suitable to put in the readme just of the, the issue queue or possibly under procedures, you know, but procedures is more like ducks. Yeah, more more serious involvement rather than, um, you know, how to use the issue queue. Yeah, I think the readme is a good place because if people are in the issue queue, they're likely to read the readme anyway, just because it's on that landing page. Um, so that's a good place to start. And then uh, the problem is like, it's hard to update things and get when there are words and not code. So I think it would be good also to have a more publicly visible place, um, maybe for, you know, on backdrop.cms.org when we do get that new documentation section up, that would be a good place. But this will be a good, for now, um, at least getting it written somewhere, and then we can review it when one three is ready and see if it's working for us or not. All right. Um, that is all we had on the list for today. I want to add one more thing regarding okay. the issue queue. Um, it's been a while since I filed a bug report, so pardon me, this isn't really new, but I'm going to show it off anyway because I think it's so great. Um, so are you guys seeing my screen? Yes. OK. So uh, Gregory did this at the beginning of December. Uh, he made it so that when you file a new issue, you now have this selection, Woo! which is very exciting. So when you file a bug report, it has a specialized template for um, you know how to reproduce the problem versus when you file a feature request. Um, it's a template that makes sense for filing a feature request. So very cool just that uh, we added issue summaries for these four different categories. And so now they all have specialized templates, which is very nice. Um, and thanks to uh, new GitHub abilities, like when you start typing an issue, it automatically starts suggesting other issues that might be related. So yay, uh, some improved tooling and improved using uses of our tooling. Also, um, also note the, uh, the label is automatically applied on the right-hand side. Yes. So hopefully that'll help us get issues categorized with labels um, more more often correctly. And uh, the security issue one, there's a template there, but if you look at the template, it just says like, stop, don't create an issue here, which is um, <laughs> nice. Yeah, very nice. Uh, that would be really funny if we put on like some label that's like, stop, 
<laughs> or something like that. I don't know. It, it, this is actually, it's still really good. I like. I really like uh, the way this this functionality works. So very nice. So yeah, I think I think we could have um, more jobs for the bot here, where like we could put a delete me label on it, and the bot could automatically delete any issue that went in with a delete me label on it. And then we could put in that description, like this issue, if you create an issue, it'll automatically be deleted, a security issue in this queue, it'll automatically be deleted. But then it might like email the security team with the contents of the issue, something like that. Yeah, maybe someday, uh, Get maybe someday GitHub will support private issues. Or automatically nice. create the issue in the private queue. The bot could have access to the private queue and move the issue from the security to the security queue from the public queue. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, it, it, that might be a nice fail safe, but not something we'd probably want to establish as the process. The, the process, yeah, because yeah. no, it would be would, temporarily would, visible. Yeah, only as fail safe. Yeah, so very very nice. Yeah, you can now move uh, issues between projects now too. That's been a huge win. So if somebody files an issue against like one, uh, files an issue against core, but it's actually a contrib project or contrib mod module problem, we can move issues between them. Um, but unfortunately, permissions to do that are still slightly restrict or fairly restricted. You have to be a maintainer in both places, which right now is pretty small. Well, limited. Yeah. But in the contrib world, um, everybody's a maintainer on all projects. So anybody, anybody that's a maintainer can move in between any two projects and contrib, which is really uh, handy. OK. That's all I wanted to say. I, I'm happy that our tools are getting better and we're putting in fairly minimal effort to do so. Thanks, GitHub, and thanks, Gregory. Uh, OK, that's the end of our official agenda. Does anyone have anything else they want to discuss today? OK. Well, thanks, everybody, for all the stuff you're working on. Um, also, thanks, Joseph, for making the dragon colorable. <laughs> it was so cool. I don't know if anyone's actually going to want that, but I want it just to play with it. So. <laughs> it, was actually, with it was actually way easier than I thought it would be. Is it um, an SVG? Yeah, I just did an SVG, and then I had the color module overwrite the color in the SVG file. Yeah, that's great. So it's, it's yeah. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll should, use the pull request, even if no one else. Maybe a contrib module, color, color, dragon color eyes. Or dragon something. color. Dragon color. Almost an well, Easter, it, Easter egg. It, it didn't require any changes to the color module. Like you could do that on any SVG and any theme. Huh? Just like the way it is. I'm going to do it in my theme. <laughs> pull request. Ben wants a purple dragon. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm, fi I'm fine with this going in core. That's, that's <laughs> it's, a, it's about as useful as everything else the color module does, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining and watching and watching later. Uh, and we will see you on the internet. All right. Bye, folks. Bye. Thanks so much. <laughs>